we're going to do problem number two in your review packet. You should have the documents listed in Canvas under week 11, week 11. The very top, it's the review packet we would have done in class. Um, so we are going to, the first thing we would have to do in a truss like this, because our truss kind of goes up, and then we kind of go up, over, okay? is uh, the, the section that I want to cut kind of runs right through here. And because it runs right through there, if I look to the left, I notice that I would have to solve for reactions because you always have to include everything on your free body diagrams when you make a cut. Over here, I notice I also have to have a reaction. So step one in this problem would be to find my reactions. Because we already did that on video four, I am just going to let you know that um, the reaction CY, that's not a C, the reaction of LY equals 0 0.75 kips up, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is this would be LY, we had a load here, a load here, a load here, a load here, and you guys set it up, see if you can solve for LY going up. It is also in the solutions that are posted. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I need to draw a free body diagram of just the cut. And usually that's the toughest thing. So I'm going to be using this side because it gets rid of all these external loads. And all I really have then is that uh, reaction at L. So it makes my problem a little bit easier. So I cover up everything to the left and I need to draw a figure that looks somewhat like that. But I am going to try to actually make it look a little bit more truss like. So we come along here, okay? And then I can see that I'm also coming up this way, okay? And um, we are kind of coming across this way. So this is HF and it's going to um, this dot, okay? And then we also have, this is H, we also have, Pretend that's coming up there. We also have underneath H is I. So I have IG. Here's G. I'm assuming everything is in tension. And then we have HG coming in that direction. So let me straighten this back up, re get it done. And then we have our 0 0.75 kips. And I'm going to go ahead and mark my geometry. Um, I comes over and it comes down. So this is clearly not to scale. And then from here all the way over is six feet. But that's what I really need to see is that piece of the puzzle. So we have three feet. And then we have this comes over at three feet and then three feet. So because we have one, two, three, Three of the members that we cut, and we need to find the internal forces, three of them are at um, some sort of a slant, some sort of an angle. So we will actually have to figure all of those out. Okay. Um, so what we can do is we can go back and we can look up at where should we start? Where should we start? I wish I had the whole picture because that would be a whole lot easier in terms of trying to uh, visualize for you all what it is we're doing. Um, if we want to go back up and look at HF, then I can see in my original picture, I have HF, and this is at three feet, okay? And what I'm going to do is just go over, okay, and down, and I'm going to make a right triangle. And so I can easily see that the height of this triangle is three. And if I'm looking between where FG is and H, I can see that that's six feet. And I like small numbers, so we're gonna call it one, two, square root of five. So when I'm looking at this member right here, I have a one, two, and a square root of five slant, okay? Which is important. Now we are going to be looking at H, G. And if we look at HG, we kind of have the same scenario. We have H to G, 
And then if I go straight down from H towards I and G over, so I have H and G, I can go back and look at my plans and see that this is three feet. And I can also see that the base of this triangle is six feet. Again, I don't like big numbers. One, two, square root of five. So when I'm looking here, I have a one, a two, and a square root of five. So now what we need to do is look here at IG. And the way I'm gonna approach that is if you go back and look at your original picture, you can see that from L to G, L to G is one slope, L to G. So I need to make a right triangle. I'm gonna come straight down and back over. Again, it's a right triangle. And if I am at G, I have to march down three, six, nine feet to get down. If I'm at L, I need to march over six, 12, 18 in order for me to um, get over to where G is. So that would be, whoops, I have to use a 0.9 because I write really hard. So, and again, one, two, square root of five. So I'm gonna put that little nugget on here, one, two, square root of five. And now we're gonna get started on finding internal forces. So summing forces X, I'm gonna have three unknowns. They both have an X. Summing forces Y, again, I have three unknowns. So now what I need to do is figure out where I can sum moments. And I could sum moments about this point, okay? And that gets rid of here and here and leaves this vector. I could sum moments about G, gets rid of this vector, this vector, and leaves this one. Um, so let's let's go ahead and kind of do that. And I'm going to get out some colored pencils because sometimes it's easier if you can kind of see what we're doing here. So when I am looking at this, this is also another three feet up to get up to this dot up here, which is F. Okay. So if I'm summing moments about G, I know that the sum of my moments equals zero. Okay, and I get rid of this vector and this vector, but I'm left with HF. So I can either put HF here and put my X and Y components, and I will see that both of them will be making a moment about G. And you guys know I like a little work. So I'm going to look at this point, and I know that I have an X and a Y component of HF. And if I look at the Y component, it runs right through G. So all I'm left with is the X component. Okay, so as I am summing to make my moments about G, I am going to start here and I have a 0 0.75. It is positive rotation and it's vertical. Okay, position runs up and down. So I have to march back 18 feet to get to where G is. And because I decided to look at this vector, remember vectors are just along a line. You can look anywhere on that line you want. I'm going to look at F because I know then that the Y component goes straight through and all I have is the X. So I have plus 2 over square root of 5 H F. And now that's my force. I need a distance. So I'm looking here at X. I'm going to come back down. And I come back down six feet and all of this equals zero. So we are going to rewrite this two over square root of five HF times six equals negative 0.75 times 18. And we're going to plug all that in our calculator. 0.75 change signs enter 18 times. Going to multiply by the square root of five, divide by two, divide by six, and we get a negative negative 2.52. What are my units on here? Kips. So HF equals 2.52 kips in compression. Because remember, we're talking behavior. So we actually know it's a compression member. So because I'm so quirky and I get confused by directions, I'm going to go ahead and show that this is acting down and to the right as a compression member. It's pushing back on that jointed H. 
And now I need to figure out something else. So we took our moment about G and got rid of this one and this one. So now if we want to take our moment about H, then we can find this vector I to G. So let's sum moments about H. And I realizing now you guys can't see what I'm doing. So let me raise this up just slightly. Okay. I'm waiting for it to clear. Look how messy my work is. This is not acceptable for homework. Um, but I'm summing the moments now about H so that I can calculate IG. Positive right hand rule. So I'm going to have a negative 0.75 kips also times. Where am I? Oh, we're going about H, okay? Times 12. I confuse myself sometimes. Um, this goes through H, this goes through H, so I'm left with this. So again, I'm going to take a colored pen if I can find one really quick. Let's use orange. And when I look at G, um, it, it kind of looks like if I want to start where I is and I put look at my X and Y components down here at I, I can see that this Y component this time goes straight through H. So I'm only left with the X components. And it's making a negative rotation. So I have negative, okay, the X component is 2 over the square root of 5 IG. And then we have to multiply this back up by our perpendicular distance. So I'm going around H. I need to go up 6 feet. So 2 over the square root of 5 times IG times 6 equals 0.75 times 12. So IG equals 0.75 times 12 times the square root of 5 divided by 2 divided by 6. And I get 0.75. Enter 12 times the square root of 5 times 2 divided by 6 divided by, I get 1.67, okay? I get 1.67 kips. I got a positive value, so I know that IG is indeed in tension, okay? So I'm going to go back up here, and I can put a 1.67. So I have HF, and I have IG, and you guys on your own can go back and sum forces X to solve for HG, and then I want you to sum forces Y. You should be able to sum both forces X and Y to figure out what HG is, because either way, in statics, you should never have a wrong answer. And I'm just gonna go ahead and let you know that HG is 0 0.839 kips. It's a positive value. It's in tension. So take these two values and go back Use your free body diagram and calculate um, HG.